get my six today from the beautiful James River in New Canton, Virginia, Buckingham County. Quite a hike away from Charlottesville, but worth the trip, as you'll see in today's video as we catch some more big fat catfish and potentially we may or may not see him, her, it, or they on the other side of the river. So we're on the water. I don't know if the depth perception of the camera here does this river justice, but this river here on the James where I am, in between Charlottesville and Richmond, has got to be a quarter of a mile wide. I mean, this is a huge river. Its nickname is America's River. I'm sure because it was the first major river discovered by the English, you know, who came to Virginia first. Um, where I put in here my beautiful bride dearly aka giggly girl you know we used to fish all the time when we lived in the Philippines we used to catch a fish called hito which is like uh, their version of catfish looks just like a catfish but it doesn't have whiskers it's really weird and I would say you wait till we get to the US you wait till we get to Virginia we're gonna go catfish and you're gonna catch some catfish as big as you are and you're gonna love it and she's like yeah 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 so we got here five years ago and I said, let's go catfish, and I want you to experience this. She's like, yeah, okay. She was flattering me, you know. She was doing it because she knew I wanted to do it. And she, the first catfish she caught was probably two to two and a half feet long, probably weighed eight or ten pounds. And she was hooked. And our entire first summer here, she uh, made me bring her catfishing somewhere every day. And we came here a lot. This was our favorite spot for the longest time. And it was a 45 minute drive one way from where we were living then. It's well more than an hour now. So we don't make it down here as much as we used to. But uh, I'm here today and I'm gonna stop yapping and I'm gonna go to the other side of this river and downstream a little bit and set up and see if we can't catch a big fat catfish and potentially, potentially find us a him, her, it, or a they. eagle that is a bald eagle flying above me here on the James River in New Canton Virginia what a beautiful beautiful sight to see look at that an American bald eagle once not even located on the East Coast now, not an, an uncommon sight. It's directly above me. Look at that. Oh, straight over top of me. Such a beautiful bird. All right, but first I've got to show you this because you know, if you follow the channel, I am obsessed with trees, tree propagation. 
See all this green stuff looks like grass? It's baby maple trees. Check this out. You know how the seeds come down? They look like whirly bird helicopters. Come down everywhere. That's what's caused this. Look, here's one still attached. Here's the whirly bird seed. Sprout came out of there. Starting the baby little maple tree. Now, these won't make it, of course. They're too dense. Uh, they're just in a wrong spot. And the first time we get a flood, a flood this spring, they'll probably get washed away. But if a person wanted to, if they had the time, wanted to come down here, you could just dig up all these. Look at that. Beautiful little baby maple trees all day long. Thousands of them. It's beautiful. The water is just too swift there, so I'm back out on the water. I'm gonna find, I mean, on, on the surface, it looks calm, to quote Eminem. But you get down there a foot or two and it's moving pretty good, so I've just gotta find a spot. That big fish I saw go up underneath this kayak isn't the only big fish in this river. I just heard one jump. Uh, there's a guy that repairs our internet when it goes out uh who is an avid fisherman he's got a big boat with a big gas powered engine and they go just south of richmond he's, he's telling me one time and he showed us pictures on his phone they catch 80 to 100 pound blue cats until they get tired of catching them now that's a considerable distance from where i am here but if they're down there they're up here too there's some kind of dam between here and there. So the ones that are on the other side of the dam can't get up here, but they're up here too. This is a big river. Man, it's a deep hole I'm floating over now. I'm telling you with this weather, the sun and the warmth, that's in the mid eighties today. I'm on the water. I'm starting to get the vibes of a beach trip. It's coming. I told dearly, hey, enjoy the beaches while you're over there in the Philippines. But as soon as you guys get home, we're going to the beaches over here. You can sleep off your jet lag. It takes about 10 days to readjust to the time because it's a 12 hour difference. It's an exact like right now, it's one o'clock in the afternoon uh, here in Virginia, which means it's 1 a.m. in the Philippines. So it's gonna take some adjusting. Well, you can adjust in a room with the air conditioning on while I'm out on the beach. Wow, my gosh, I saw a fish that had to be four feet long. Is one of those big alligator gars. They're huge. Whew. All right, let me find me a place where I can get out and catch one of these things. All right, we're gonna set up here, try from here. Found this beautiful little eddy here where a creek comes in from somewhere. So I put out right here, checking for potential Bigfoot Sasquatch tracks. See some deer, little deer. See what we got here, big raccoon. Big raccoon, some kind of bird, big bird. All right, I don't see any potential Bigfoot Sasquatch tracks. Doesn't mean him, her, it, or they. May or may not be watching from up here. Or anywhere else for that matter. Okay. <clears throat> back where the kayak is when I was getting my gear off the back of the boat. I heard like a loud thunderous crash. Like something jumped in from a treetop to a treetop. But I can't, can't see anything. So let's try from here. That's 
think it's going to settle down here. It's not as swift as it was up there. We're out of the sun, so I think I'm going to put my shirt back on because I've just been reacquainted with an old friend I haven't seen since last summer. His name is Deerfly. A little bit smaller than a horse fly, but the bite is no less painful. Let's cover up as much skin as possible. Time to eat. Crack open a cold one. Arizona green tea with ginger and honey. What do you think I meant, brah? Cashews. Pastrami, cheddar, and mustard on wheat bread. So them not biting right now, right here, right now, isn't a bad thing because I'm tired. I'm gonna sit here on the riverbank and take a nap. Tell you nothing puts me to sleep better than the sound of the water going by the breeze and the trees and the tall sawgrass beside me I've got my chair sitting over top of my pole so if I do get a hit while I'm asleep can't take a pole in the water and it'll wake me up true story the first uh, catfishing pole we ever got for my wife dearly she lost less than a month into it because we were in, fishing in the James somewhere different different location and uh, she would just go off and leave her pole and I would say, hon, you better stay kind of close to your pole in case you get a strike. And she, she didn't take it seriously and she was too far away and, and she got a hit. I saw the end of the pole go like that and I said, honey, you're getting a bite. And she started running to her pole and before she could get back to it, something just jerked that pole and it went shooting up over the bank and into the river like a rocket. And uh, we never saw that pole again. Maybe I'm holding my mouth the wrong way. Maybe that's why they're not biting. Let me try that. Hold it different. Uh, figure it out when I wake up. Still no fish, but I had a nice little nap. So I've got the rod back here now in the backpack. I usually have it right here. But I'm just gonna go upstream. I'm gonna go up to where I put in, so I need to be able to row very efficiently and proficiently. So I've got the pole back here. You know, they say if it isn't broken, don't break it. Well, I haven't broken anything, but I've always caught fish up that way. So I'm just gonna go up there. I'm gonna paddle around on this beautiful river for a while taking the scenery leaving this kind of somewhat creepy little place here beautiful 
It's an eerie feeling here. I want to see if we can uh, just catch fish up there we always have in the past. <sighs> I paddled all the way up to the bridge on top and the train trestle below it. My goodness, this is so beautiful. Look at those rapids. It doesn't matter that I've not caught any fish today. It's just worth coming out and being out here. Whew, got a nice breeze. Spin around here. Show you a downstream where we just came from. Mm. 15 minutes straight, non-stop paddling. We were straight across from that plant down there. Just paddled all the way upstream. Oh, it's gorgeous. Ah. Okay, so this is where me and my beautiful bride Dearly, aka Giggly Girl, and our son Daniel have always caught fish here in the past. I'm baiting up my hook here. I'm trying to get the camera angle's kind of low, but I'm trying to make it feel like you're here fishing with me. I do have a really neat fishing story about here. We were here, me and Dearly and Daniel, one time. And there were some other people sitting here fishing. And this is back before we had smartphones. But those people had smartphones. And they got an alert that there was a flash flood coming down here. <clears throat> and uh, if you see anybody, tell them to get off the river. So this was about an hour before dark. About 10 minutes later, we saw some canoers coming down. There was a guy and two women. They were probably all in their 30s, mid-30s. And we said, how far are you guys going? They said, oh, another hour or so, blah, blah, blah. We told them about the warning we just heard. Said, you guys might want to get out of the river. And they were like, really? Because they hadn't heard. Here we go. Let's cast. So... We told them, and uh, they they took us seriously, and they got out of the water, and no sooner than they got their canoes out and pulled up the ramp, which is upstream a little ways here, they're not allowed to fish on the actual ramps, so we're down below the ramp here. Um, that way you don't hinder boats coming in and out of the water. Uh, as soon as they got those canoes out, got their stuff out, dragged up the ramp, it was almost like this wave of water just came down the river. And uh, we sat up on top of the ramp and watched as over the course of about the next hour, this river rose probably 12 feet in an hour. I mean, it was, there must have been a sudden cloud burst somewhere on a mountain just upstream from here. And uh, what I remember also so much about that night were the snakes. You see these rocks? Uh, this might be kind of creepy to know, but there are so many water snakes laying down here underneath these rocks right now. And as the water rose that night, we had spotlights. We were just watching as there were just dozens and dozens of snakes coming up from out from underneath the rocks. But if we hadn't been here, this is the last public fishing area. Uh, or, you know, easy, easy public access place until you get about another hour downstream to where those folks who were canoeing were going. If we hadn't been here to tell them what was going to happen, I don't think they would have made it. Uh, I think there were people that did die in that flash flood. That would have been 2016. For those of you who like to fact check everything, Google that. James River Flash Flood, Virginia 2016. Uh, unfortunately, there are several people that perish in this river, I think about every year. It's a big river, river goes a long way. 
Uh, if you're going to be out doing that kind of stuff, hey, I checked the weather before I came today. Trust me. You've always got to know what the weather's going to be doing if you're going to be out on, on water, especially big water. Remember I was telling you about the water snakes? Let me flip the phone. I'm gonna show you one right here about five feet in front of me. Fishing pole, right? I was sitting right here like this. That's my leg and my pole. He just slithered right on out there. Boy, he's beautiful, beautiful. Tell me more about how I make these stories up, brah. Well, seems as if today was not the day to catch the fish. Maybe you can still see the snake, still sitting there. But I uh, got a decent little bit of exercise in kayaking, got some beautiful scenery, got to see a bald eagle, a snake, and get out here and spend a day in the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and start packing it up and head on back to the homestead. Uh, stay tuned for more adventures from here at Homesteading Off the Grid. And whatever the hell this channel's about, 